This helmet has, according to Brian Johnson, been an important part of his hair loss stack. He claims that the science is robust regarding these light hats, and in this video, we are going to find out if that is true. If you have been battling androgenic alopecia or hair loss, you probably heard about these low-level laser therapy hats, also known as LLLT. It honestly sounds like a really bad plot from the 90s movies where lasers were everything, and today apparently they will regrow your hair. But LLLT has been FDA approved for hair loss for years now, and many people swear by it, including Mr. Johnson. The big question is though, does it actually work or is it just another overpriced gimmick. And in today's video, we are going to break down the real scientific studies to find out whether LLLT is worth your money or if it's just another overhyped treatment. But first, what is low-level laser therapy actually? LLLT uses red and near-infrared light to stimulate hair follicles. The idea is that the light penetrates the scalp, boosting blood flow, ATP production, and extending the anagen phase of the hair follicles. You will usually see it marketed as laser helmet, laser combs, and laser caps, which claims that it can stop hair loss and regrow hair. But does it actually hold up in clinical trials? The first study that we are going to dive into is a 2023 study published in the International Journal of Trichology, where they tested LLLT on men with Norwood Hamilton grades 2 to 4 in androgenic alopecia. Participants were divided into two groups. Group 1 used LLLT combined with 5% minoxidil, and Group 2 used only 5% minoxidil. The LLLT device used in the study was applied for 30 minutes per session three times a week over a 16 week period. And after the 16 weeks, this is what happened according to the study. Group 1, which used the LLLT and 5% minoxidil, had an average hair count increase of 34.5 hairs per square centimeter, which is fairly impressive to be honest. But then on the other hand, Group 2, which only used minoxidil had an average increase of 24.2 hairs per square centimeter, which doesn't set them that far apart. This means that the LLLT group had a 42% greater improvement. However, in the study, they noted that the difference wasn't statistically significant, meaning that while the LLLT might enhance minoxidil's effects, it is not even enough of a difference to confirm the difference is due to the light therapy or it might just be a random chance and difference in the participants. And if the numbers doesn't make any sense to you, they also included some patient photos. And honestly, when I saw these photos for myself, I actually had to carefully read the description of these pictures because I honestly had barely any idea of which one of those was the before and after since, well, obviously I could barely see any difference. And I definitely didn't see any difference between the minoxidil only and the combined group. But that was only a single study. Instead, let's take a look at this study, which is a meta-analysis of the FDA-approved LLT devices, which means they're only looking at FDA-approved devices. A 2021 systematic review published in the Journal of Clinical and Aesthetics Dermatology, they analyzed multiple randomized controlled trials of LLLT devices. And this is what they found. Across seven clinical trials, LLLT led to an average increase of 10.2 hairs per square centimeter. And when we look at the previous study I just took up, that actually makes fairly sense because that was about the same increase they had with the LLLT combined with the minoxidil compared to the minoxidil alone. So the placebo group saw an average increase of only 3.9 hairs per square centimeter. So there were definitely a difference between them. Here's another interesting fact. 
Laser-based devices were nearly 1.8 times more effective than the LED-based devices, which also confirms us that some of these devices, even though that they are FDA approved, are not equally created and there is a 180% difference in their effectiveness. So guys, once again, just because something is FDA approved doesn't mean that it's effective or safe or anything. And if anyone is interested, there were no major side effects reported. Obviously, it's lasers. I mean, I don't see what could happen. Like, it's not going to shrink your testicles or anything like that. Another important detail is that the laser helmet in these studies were worn for 20 to 30 minutes per session three times per week for a period of 16 to 26 weeks guys that is a lot of time you're gonna wear those helmets like we also see brian johnson he wears it every morning i don't remember the exact time but he will wear it for an extended period of time every week so if you're considering one of these devices one of the clear takeaways from these reviews and studies is the clear superiority of laser-based llt devices over the LED based options. While both of them does emit lights, the laser based devices deliver way more targeted and consistent energy leading to better penetration into the scalp. The reviews also emphasize that long-term consistent use at least six months is just crucial for seeing results. So guys, this is not a quick fix. Like even minoxidil works faster than this. And I'll also say like finasteride and rotastrad will be more effective or IU584-1. So just keep that in mind if you decide to go this way. Another interesting takeaway was that the LLLT was most effective for men under 50 and those with early to moderate androgenic alopecia which means norwood hamilton grades two to four not anything above why do i say it well honestly guys i see a lot of older men now i recently just saw a guy at reddit he's 60 who's gone on finasteride and minoxidil like kudos to you great you're doing something for yourself just remember these things work better if you're below 50 years old so at the end of the day does the laser helmet works well According to the FDA and some of the studies, it seems like they do have an effect. Although they are extremely expensive, if you ask me, and there's a lot of variants in them, like you won't know which one works unless you really sit down and read which kind of laser therapy they are using, and you really have to study up on these things. Next thing is, if you're not on finasteride, dutasteride, minoxidil, IU584-1, microneedling like there's a ton of other things that you can use that i would personally use before that i even use the hair guards hair growth helmet i see some improvement with that and as i usually say don't buy the grow band before you are on finasteride to testeride iu584 one microneedling ketoconazole like these things are gonna yield much more results in a much shorter time frame but of course if you already own those things buying that laser helmet might give you a slight smaller boost. And if you're not on all of these things, I would definitely recommend that you learn more about finasteride, tutasteride, minoxidil, IU584-1, all of that. And I have a great video for you here where you can continue learning about hair loss that I would definitely recommend you go and watch here.